So in the children's class, dealing with anger, we, uh, part two, we in uh, Galatians, I'm sorry, James chapter one, verse 19. Uh, go ahead. James 1, 19. Yes. Wherefore, my beloved brothers, let every man be swift to hear, swift to speak, swift to say. Right. So it says, wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, swift to speak, swift to say. Right. So it says, wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be so when being swift to her now, the, the hard part you done already. Part of some of the hard part. You went to that person and started threatening them. Now you're talking to them. So in the midst of that conversation, telling them what they've done wrong, you got that point out. Hey, I didn't like that you did this to me. You hurt my feelings or I brought some type of harm to me. Now you're having a conversation. Now you got another job. It says that every man be swift to hurt. Why would you have to be swift to hurt? Because if you ain't swift to hurt, then if you're not swift to hurt, then this is what you do. When you're talking to that person, when I try to tell you what happened, like, oh, I'm sorry, it was an accident. You know, you were cutting me from like, no, no, it wasn't. You did this on purpose. This and that, and then you want to do that the way. Right, right. That's a good answer. He said that you be swift to her because now you're giving that other person an opportunity to explain themselves. Because it may be that the person may not have even known that they've done anything to you. So now you're in a conversation and you said the things that you have to say. I didn't like this. Now you swift to her because now you have to actually stay there in the problem, in the situation, and now it's your turn to listen. Give the person an opportunity to, to explain themselves. Give them a chance to explain their side of the situation. Whether, hey, it might be, hey, I didn't, you know what, I didn't know I did it all to you. I didn't mean no harm, I didn't mean any malice. An apology might even come from that. The person now, after listening, they might say, you know what, I did do that. And I didn't mean it, and I won't do it again. But you got to be able to be swift to her and not just be angry to the point to where you say what you got to say, I don't want to hurt nothing. Get away from me. Now go, now don't do it again. Now you're still in a situation and you're threatening the person. No, you got to listen. Give them a chance to redeem themselves. It says, it's slow to speak. Being slow to speak, you're not going to be cutting them off. They, they in the midst of saying, well, I didn't do it on purpose. You jumping in. Yes, you did. You saw me. You did step on my shoe on purpose. It was there the whole time. Nah, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't Christ-like. That ain't how we really resolve a situation. It says, be slow to speak. And then it says, slow to wrath. Why you have to be slow to wrath? Still, because at first it says in not being angry, you corrected them. What now could you be battling? What could make you now battle with being angry all over again? Uh, let's get somebody else. Some more. The person is explaining. They're saying sorry and they didn't mean to and this and that. What could make you still be angry with that person. Yeah. Okay, I, I give an example. Uh, you got something? Uh, they stepped on your shoe and now I'm Yeah, that too. She said they stepped on your shoe and now, you know, you still got to deal with the pain in your foot hurt. Baby, I... Like, say you're still walking and somebody bumped into you and they say, baby, yeah, that's a bit. Go ahead, Eliza. Alright. So the question was like, do you need to say something to the other one that you're still angry? Like, you got the bad end of it. Like, you still, you, you're not satisfied. They're exactly. still they sorry. You're exactly. still mad about the situation. Right. That's, and that's the answer. That's a good answer. Let's give, like, the example that Soraya gave. She said, they stepped on your shoe, they said sorry. But now your foot still hurt. So you still have to be, once again, slow to ride because 
them saying sorry might not have been enough. Well, I feel like it should be more. You didn't say sorry the right way. Or, well, you still shouldn't have did it. No, now you got to be slow to rap because, hey, the person, they said they, they said they were sorry. They didn't mean to. So now you still have to go from there to now you got to accept the apology. Slow to rap. Even though you're still dealing with, like, the example of your foot still hurt. Slow to rap. Don't just flirt up. And that ain't enough. I don't care that you say you're sorry. Well, what I'm about, still hurt. Well, what about going to tell, even though the you know, situation got resolved right there with you and the person? They did say that they were sorry. And so that's a resolution. That's what you're seeking for. Because Christ said, if they repent, then what should be done? Caleb? Okay, Christ said, if somebody repent, what should be done? What should you do if somebody repent? Forgive. Okay, forgive them. Okay, so now, so then why do we sometimes go and tell? Because they don't listen? Who don't listen? Okay, Soraya? Davion? You flagging your hand, you got an answer. It's like, if somebody do something, you got to tell them. Like, you can't just tell them that for no reason if they're not doing something. Right. Doing something now that's true. But what if they say they sorry, if they say they sorry, then Christ said, forgive them. And if you forgive them, then there's no need to go and tell because they're going to stop. Okay? They stop. That's what you want them to do. Okay? Nobody's bleeding. They didn't break nothing. They just planned too much. Got you upset. You corrected them, not being angry. You told them to stop, just like the scriptures say, so they stop. So the question is why are we still going to tell? Okay? A liar. But if we want to tell because we want them to feel the affliction or the pain or you know, the the angriness that we feel. Okay, so now with all that being true, okay, Caleb. Um could it be because we still have to like actually don't show things on Okay, so now that all that that's true, but y'all still missing what we're looking for. Why do they go and tell? Because there's something up with them. It's in please ask us. Any problem? What is it, Maury? Well, I can't see you. Oh, yeah. Because what? Because they probably still offended? Okay, now that's it. Please ask us 28. In the Apocrypha. No, the Red Book. Chapter 28.
28, we'll get to the point. So, brother, get it back. 28 and 2. Mayana, go ahead, get that. Okay, it's Ecclesiastes 28, verse 2. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he has done unto thee. Stop. So, why did they go tell, Mayana? Because they did something to that person. Okay, use the scriptures. The answer is in that verse. Read it again. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he has done unto thee. Why? Did, listen to Christ. Don't listen to the person. Okay, so all these scriptures written, they had permission from Christ to say these things. If they went to tell, why did they go tell? Based on what you read. Read it one more time, because that's the answer. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he has done unto thee. Why did they go tell? Because. If somebody went, if you did something and you apologized, and they went and told on you, why did they go tell based on what you just read? Because they didn't, because they didn't forgive the hurt that they There you go, right. <laughs> you figured it out. Because they didn't forgive you. So now, if y'all got that part right, you know what you got to understand? When somebody tell you that they are sorry, what should you not go do? You should not be running to say something to somebody because that is evidence that you did not what? Forgive. That you did not forgive. Okay? All right. All right, so back in James chapter 1. Right. So now, 
now you dealing, now you still angry. You didn't accept the apology, or the person didn't say they were sorry how you wanted to. Now you're ready to avenge. Now you're ready to do something harmful to them. You know, you imagine, okay, but what can I do to them because they ain't really sorry. He don't mean that. So you know what? I'm going to get him back. He pushed me. Wait till you turn around. I'm going to push him back. Now you can't be like that. You got to accept the apology and forgive because forgiveness, you won't have this type of spirit. It says, he that revenge my vengeance from the Lord, and he will surely keep his sins and remember. So the same way that you want the most high to forgive you, when you pray and you do something wrong and you get corrected about it, and it comes out that, okay, you you broke a law, the law of the scriptures. And you go to bed at night and you say, God, forgive me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. The same way, don't everybody want God to forgive you for the things you've done wrong? So the same way that you want the most high to forgive, you got to forgive and not be vengeful, not want to get even. And then it says that he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. So if you forgive somebody, are you keeping their sins in remembrance? You got a question mark? Uh, please, he asked if it's 28 in verse 1. So when you forgive, you got to let those things go. You can't wake up tomorrow and go to that person. Now you watching out. I want to see if they're going to bump into me again. I want to, I'm, this, now this time, the next day comes, you stick your foot out there on purpose as they walk by. I wonder if he's going to hit it again. I wonder, was he really sorry? I, you can't deal like that. You got to forgive. And upon forgiving, you got to move on. Those things are no longer in remembrance. What are you doing? Because you know what? The most high, he going to you know, you for that. Stop, stop. So, okay. let's go back to James chapter 1. Verse 1. Yeah, James 1. Now we're in the 20th verse. You know what wrath means? Wrath is anger. So the anger of, of somebody, it says work not the righteousness of the most high. So you can't be doing righteous, you can't be righteous and angry at the same time. They don't even, they don't even look spiritual. You ever seen somebody when they real, when they real angry, they don't care, they just angry. Does that look like a righteous person? Yeah, so you see an angry woman cussing somebody out, not really caring, finna throw a flip flops. You know, that don't look like a woman of God. You see an angry man, you know, saying how he gonna kill this ML for this or that. Does that look like a man of God? Right, so an angry child. That's not, you're not gonna look like a child of God. So that's what it means by the wrath of man work not the righteousness of God. You can't be wrathful and then work the righteousness of the Most High. You can't do it. If you wanna work the righteousness of the Most High, what do you have to give place to? Oh yeah, the Most High, but what about the Most High? What, what is the, what the scripture that we read earlier it told you to give place to what? What are you constantly learning about the Most High? Huh? 
Righteousness, okay. Well, what is it? What's righteousness? Because if we don't know, then we're going to establish our own righteousness. And what is it we supposed to do? The commandments. So we're supposed to give place to what? The commandments. We're supposed to give place to the law of the Most High, okay? Okay. Yes. Right, so that's, that's an example. Like, I was going to help you out, my God, but you got it. You know, we give place to the law of the Most High. So when I said that before the wrath of man, the wrath of man was some of the things y'all named earlier. I'm going to get out of my face or I'm going to punch you. You know, we can't give place to those type of things because those type of things is not going to get the person to do the thing that you're really looking for them to do. And what's that? Anybody know? Somebody step on your shoe, what do you want them not to do? Again. Exactly. So, saying the statements that you made earlier, like you want to, before, like threatening the person, what you want to do, that don't give the person to see not to do it again. So it says, the wrath of man working not the righteousness of God. And what's the righteousness that the Most High wants you to work? Anybody? Let's go to Matthew chapter 18. Now, 
approach the person as not being able to give place to the law of the Most High. Then you correct them, you admonish them, and they repent. Now you got to forgive. And by forgiving, the will of the Most High that was intended from the beginning of the situation, you gain them, you know, it comes forth. So that's the righteousness that James was talking about. Um, let's go to back to Ephesians chapter 4. Can I ask you to start at 25? Because mm -hmm. oftentimes you get how many different stories? Several different stories. The scriptures say what? Go oh, ahead, yeah. who's going to read the light? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Wherefore, put away, lying, speak everything truthfully. 